Here's a first look at Madden 15 Connected Franchise Gameplay, Chicago Bears vs. The Marshals. Enjoy. In time here. Here we go. Um, all right, so we've, this is an offline CFM. Um, let's kind of start just walking through some of the new features this year. Uh, obviously, people kind of recognize the, uh, recognize the tiles, but uh, a lot of new stuff to go over. Oh, for sure. Uh, game prep being our biggest addition. I'm sure a lot of people have already read our blog out there. Uh, game prep and confidence, we put a lot of work into this year, basically trying to find ways to make our users uh, interact more with the game in between actual playing the on-the-field experience. So this is the way you're going to take teams like the Browns, the Jaguars, the Raiders, uh, with a lot of young talent and develop those players without necessarily having to risk them uh, while you're actually in the game. So uh, I think we're going to start out, and I know a lot of people are always obsessive about relocation. Uh, so we're going to... Who are we going to relocate here? We're going to take the Raiders, just, you know, why not? Yeah, why not? Uh, I think they're a great option for a team to relocate. Uh, just They can move to... All the same cities from last year, but we've also changed the different teams that each of those cities contain. And okay. we also had a great uh, contest where our users created content, our logos and uniforms, so that they can go to some of these new teams and uh, see some of that user-created content, those uniforms. All right, so we're starting the relocation process with the Raiders, uh, just for the fun of it. Uh, I, you know, I don't mind. Being a Broncos fan... It doesn't matter where the Raiders are located. I'm still going to hate them yes. as a Broncos fan. So wherever you put them, it doesn't matter. They're still rivals. Uh, let's go. So switching over here to the Browns, we're going to let RG take over the sticks and run us through some of these drills. Sure. Okay. Uh, Gabe, kind of just talk about talk about all this that we're seeing. So Okay. So this is our all-new game prep. You can see we have a nice little onboarding to kind of teach the users what exactly they're looking at, what are the options they have available to them and how they can sort of uh, start interacting with their team in different ways. So what Game Prep allows you to do, you basically have two major options. Am I going to focus on my long-term development? Uh, and maybe that's when I look at my younger guys and start trying to build them up. And then you also have confidence, and confidence is where you would think about more short-term performance. You know, make sure uh, if I'm gonna go play a game that you know I have all my players playing really well at the highest level they can, you wanna make sure they're playing at the highest confidence. The so, biggest way to raise that is um, obviously performing well in the game, and you'll you'll see that you know if you throw three interceptions, you'll take a, a confidence drop from that. Um, you perform really well, you start feeding the ball to your receivers, they'll start becoming more confident. Now, uh, in between those games, that's when you would use this game prep element of saying, let me go in here, maybe go through the game plan, let's go through some drills, and you can start building up confidence in that way. Right. So what RG's kind of doing so, right now is kind of filtering through those different game prep options. Yeah, so basically, if you're running with the Broncos, like I will be, Peyton Manning is already as good as he's going to get, essentially. I mean, you can obviously still invest in XP, but it's going to be a lot more expensive for a guy at his age. Same thing with your boy Tom Brady. Yeah. You're going to be working on confidence every week for those guys to make sure they're in tip-top condition. What does... Uh, and, and then your younger guys. So we've got the Browns, of course, Johnny Football, Gigum. Um, get him in there, start working on him while Hoyer's taking the lead role, and you can actually do that this year. Kind of exactly. work on guys on, behind the scenes. Yeah, so you look at, like, the example, Tom Brady, <laughs> one of the best quarterbacks in the league. He's really, you don't need to do much more development to his, you know, long-term focus. But you have guys like Ryan Mallett, Garoppolo back, backing him up that, you know, you want to start making sure that they're getting the reps. Brady's right. not going to be there forever. He's going to be calling for a pretty high contract you know if you can't afford them it's time to start looking at those younger guys and this is a way of saying you know you can start building those guys up and when they're ready to play they're ready to play yeah, yeah. That, that's what i love about this drill guys it's like you can see i get xp for this so you know confidence is something you want for your starters a guy like johnny manziel i might not be starting him year one i still need to progress this guy i mean he's my future right here so when i do this drill for xp right here i'm taking Hoyer out like right there like Hoyer's gone you know he's he's not the future for XP I'm going to do this with Johnny Football just because it's that long-term investment because I can eventually spend that XP on you know different ratings and whatnot and so this this drill costs uh what is it like 18 it, it costs about yeah 18 hours uh depending on where you are in the schedule you'll have different okay. uh, uh, time available to you so let's say you're in a bye week where you have a very long week to prepare in fact right. you have two weeks to prepare for your next game um 
if you're playing a Thursday night game, then you're going to have a little bit less time to prepare. Okay. So you, you can think about that. Even a Monday night game, that gives you an additional amount of time to practice and prepare. A cool thing to call out is the, uh, the trait breakdown on the right. So that's actually going to explain to you why you're going to get that XP or confidence increase. And this is a good way for our, our players to look at this and say, you know, my coach doesn't actually have a QB development trait. So that's something to possibly progress my own coach or hire a coach out there who's really good at progressing quarterbacks. So then you would see that, that go up. The player's development trait's also a big deal. Um, and you now know. you can do that at any point in the season, correct? Correct. If you have the right amount of experience, you can go inside of our uh, buy packages screen. We've completely redesigned that screen. We'll go. We'll check it out in a little bit after we've built up some experience. But uh, you can take a guy from a slow to normal, quick, and even a superstar. Um, Consistency is a big deal. If the player is inconsistent, they're probably going to have a very inconsistent range of XP, XP they get. Very consistent, you'll probably get more towards the high end. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and look at right. cover one. So, Jump in. So, so this yeah. is going to be the um, cover one um, drill where we'll be able to get XP. And I love the fact that we took the skills trainer drills and implemented them, them into CFM. That was something I loved to do back when I was playing on PS2. To see that back, it's awesome. And the thing I really love here is we're literally killing two birds with one stone. You're progressing your players, but you're also learning how to play the games. And we got drills for all the new mechanics, whether it's the pass rush, the tackling stuff. So you got all these new mechanics that you got to learn, and you can learn them while progressing your players. So I, I love that. And um, as you can see right here, we, we got new drills. These are new to Madden 15, where we actually teach you how to beat the different how to read the different coverage types and then how to beat them so this one's going to teach us how to read a cover one and then how to beat a cover one and um you know johnny football you know go going into the nfl he's i'm sure he's gonna have to do a lot of studying <laughs> on you know the exotic defenses he's gonna see so let's take a look at this uh Before cover this one snap, drill hopefully i could beat it and one. uh by finding you know, that do johnny some justice here on the practice I'm pretty field. confident that you can <laughs> <laughs> Something to call out also is that he's in the preseason right now, so what we're throwing at him are more like lessons or tutorials, teaching them how to break down the cover one, cover two, how to do a pass rush. As you progress towards the season or into the regular season, we're going to start giving them the actual challenges. That's where you go for that bronze, silver, gold, medal, and where you get even more experience boost out of that. Okay. We want to make sure that the players are familiar with all these concepts and then we start introducing the more challenging drills to them later in the game very cool yeah i like the emphasis on teaching people football i mean probably 99.9% .9 of the people watching the stream right now are guys who understand a lot of this concept because they've been playing you know football themselves or they play a lot of madden but there are plenty of people who talk to us uh, that just don't understand like all the rules i mean we've got fans we've got fans uh, you know in other countries that really want to get into madden and so teaching them what all this means, what does cover one mean, what does cover two mean, what does cover three, you know, zone versus man even, you know, all that kind of stuff, uh, teaching them all that, you know, where you can actually interactively do it is, is pretty, something I think is really cool. And then, of course, building it into my favorite mode, connected franchise, like, uh, I think is also awesome. Yeah, the beauty of it all, where CFM comes into it, obviously uh, our gameplay guys build all these great tutorials, breaking down the routes, kind of pointing out the players, audio to go along with it. At CFM, we take it that next step. We look at where the team is struggling as you progress. Where are the problem areas? What can they improve upon? And that's when we start suggesting to them, hey, well, maybe you need to look at doing the cover two. You've been struggling and facing that cover two a lot. Okay. Uh, you're facing a blitzing team. You want to make sure you know how slide protection on the offensive line works. Slide protection is something people very rarely use. That was too easy for you. Yeah, too, <laughs> one thing I, I want to call out, too, I, I, didn't really, I showed it off a little bit at the beginning. One thing I love about these drills in CFM as well is the new camera toggle works in that mode as well. So if you find yourself in a defensive drill, you know, where you're trying to work on your linebackers tackling, you could press up on the D-pad and get that all-new defensive player lock uh, camera and see it from the defense's perspective. And it also makes the drill easier. So I love that you could, you know, grab the camera that's appropriate for the drill that you're running. Uh, great functionality, in my opinion. Yeah. So you just got a solid thousand experience points for Johnny. Uh, here in the screen, we're actually going to show you as you progress through game prep. We keep track of. Sorry, I have a question, oh, go Gabe. Ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't mean to interrupt you. What? Uh, so you explained that basically the coaching uh, player. How much goes into how much XP you get? Versus, you know, like the drill itself and, and all that kind of stuff. How much XP you get here? After yeah, that drill you just yeah. After you do it. So after you do it, you can see um, the coach trait. Like we said, the Browns coach doesn't have. Uh, he's not great at developing quarterbacks, or at least he doesn't have that package yet. You can go in there and buy that for that coach. 
Um, we also look at how consistent that quarterback is. Um, Johnny just being a rookie coming out, we consider the rookies in general to be kind of in the middle of there, but obviously consistency sure. is a rating they can increase. And you can see right there that Johnny is a superstar developer. We have him at the superstar development trait. That means he's going to progress a lot faster than some of our quarterbacks in uh, CFM. Uh, obviously, he passed the drill also. Okay. Uh, so he's getting, you can see the drill result, he's getting all the experience uh, that he should be getting from that. If he had failed yeah. it, you know, we still want to reward users for putting the time into doing these actions. So even if you were to fail the drill, we want to give you some amount. It's not going to be as much, but uh, we want to reward you in some way. So the bar at the bottom there, is that basically the percentage at which uh, those different yeah. things come into play? So okay. you can see the colors just match the colors on the bar. Okay. And, uh, you know, the biggest result, the, the two biggest factors being the fact that he's a superstar developer and right. that he passed the drill successfully. I mean, it's an easy one. Mm -hmm. So, you know, <laughs> when we go into some more challenging things, you'll see when you're trying to hit bronze, silver, and gold, so getting gold ain't easy in a lot of our, our drills, Absolutely. you know. Um, as we progress through, you'll see uh, this list list pop populate with all the players that are gaining experience or confidence. Um, we'll, we'll talk about this screen more when we get in later in the season, but basically this is where you'll start to see, um, you know, throwing a few interceptions, getting sacked, that's where you start ha having your confidence raise or lower. Um, but you can you have a history of it all happening. So, uh, And then when we get to progression, and as we simulate, we can actually start seeing uh, when we buy packages, let's say we increased his, um, his speed, his throw accuracy, we'll actually keep a track of all of that happening here. Um, also, if, you, if you're the kind of user that doesn't want to mess with all this kind of stuff, you can delegate it all to the CPU. We've spent a lot of time building our CPU logic to make sure that when they simulated these, that they're actually developing the players that they, that they should be developing, and okay. then they're buying the packages to improve these players the best way they possibly can. Uh, just to sit on this screen a little bit, we clearly break down your three main options. You have the in-game drills, one of, our, one of the drills that RG just ran through. Um, we have improved confidence, that's where we can kind of you know, raise your confidence a little bit at a time. It, you can't comp, you can't raise your confidence as quickly as you can for XP because the idea is, you know, a lot of that confidence comes from playing the games, playing them well. Um, if you find a guy whose confidence has dipped below 30, that's when their ratings start taking a hit. So if you see a guy below 30, you might want to go in here and try to bring it back up to a normal rate. And then if you see a guy on the bubble, say he's like at 73, 74 confidence, yeah, run him through a confidence drill, and then you'll start seeing his ratings increase. Very cool. Uh, and then all all the uh, Increasing your XP and increasing your confidence, that all gets tied into recommended activities. So this is kind of also clues you into that CPU logic of these are those concepts, these are those things that we think you need to work on. Uh, you know, definitely need to work on our talented wide receiver. We probably guess who they're talking about here. <laughs> yeah. And um, so this is a great way to kind of look. If you're not familiar with the team at all, or you know, if you just want to go in there quickly, go into recommended activities, run through. Let's you know develop that promising receiver. Um, and it's going to give us, obviously, you know, you want to work up on this guy. Keep, keep building him up. I mean, he's already pretty high, but you know, still yeah. young. can get him a little higher. And so you see we still have Johnny up there, and we have uh, the, the game that we got from these two guys. It shows you just before. Um, these not being in-game drills. Uh, this was just a development activity that you do out of game, just, you know, just to show the users that you can do these pretty quickly. You can get through a week of practice really quickly, but for the guys who want to spend their time playing those drills, it's... All, all power to them. Yeah, I was about to say, like, sometimes I'll get, you know, in my CFM, and, and sometimes I'm running, I'm in three at a time or something, and so, you know, you start to run out of time. You get home late or whatever, you got a game to play. Oh, you know, I haven't done my practice or, or you know, in this case, game prep. So it's kind of nice that you can choose to kind of whip through them some weeks or or, exactly. or spend the time. If, if you're other times where I'm just sitting there like, oh, man, when are they going to advance? So... So that's nice, yeah. As, as, as a fan of the game, I'm just super excited because playing in my CFM, I always wanted a way. It's like sometimes you want to focus on the now. I know we already touched on this. It's just how excited I am. Sometimes you want to focus on the now. I need this receiver to start progressing right now, and now we can do that. You can just go straight to the confidence. But then I used to always – I had I played with a Patriots fan, and, you know, <laughs> I had Mallet back there. Brady's already a 99. I didn't need to develop Brady anymore. You know, he's not a 99. He's close to it. 
And but I had no way to get Mallet to boost up unless I put him in the game. I'm not putting Mallet in for Brady, but now with you know being able to just you know kind of hoard that XP with Mallet and use it on him, you know, gain him as we're going through the season. But if I also need to boost someone for the right now, I could go after a confidence drill. Having yeah. that balance for me as a fan is just so important, and I just got to give you guys credit for it. All right, that's my rant. Yeah. I'm sorry. Ran over. I'm excited. Here's another thing people are going to be excited about, RG. Uh, Gabe, explain this to us. <laughs> it's it's something that doesn't need a lot of explanation. <laughs> Heavily requested. Uh, we finally were able to get this in. It wasn't exactly the easiest thing to do, but you know, as a commissioner of an online league or as a any player on an offline league, I can go in here and I say, you know, I don't really care about the preseason. I, so why don't I just sim through it? But we took that the next step further and said, you know, why don't you take me to the midseason, the playoffs, to the Super Bowl? Um, let me go to the offseason. I'm a guy who only cares about the draft, so let me just sim straight to the draft. Ten years, though. Ten years. <laughs> Ten years. <laughs> Ten years. We won't touch that. Um, but obviously, I, all of our fans are very welcome to just jump in here. As a developer myself, it was great to, you know, make some changes. I wonder, you know, tweak our trade logic, tweak the draft, and then sim 10 years and then immediately come back and say like, okay, so this is what the league looks like in 10 years <laughs> without having to hit advanced week, you know, 16, 20 times, times 10. Um, so it, it's, an, it's a neat little addition and it just, it goes a long way. Uh, we're going through the relocation flow for the Raiders. So we're just gonna sim through the preseason right now as we get those relocation steps. And, um, oh, that's right. Let's go to Shah Khan and force advance. Obviously, the uh, multi-user offline functions a lot like a online league, so if you have multiple characters playing, then uh, they have the option of setting themselves as ready. Once everyone's ready, then it right. will advance the league. Uh, any user also in an offline league has that option to just force advance it if they don't want to wait for the other guy on the couch to do, you know, set his roster, to set his, set his depth chart. Surprisingly, we get that question a lot still, Gabe. But I don't want to play online. I don't want to play an online franchise. I just want to play franchise. Franchise is real. <laughs> franchise exists. It's one and the same. The beauty of it all is all the work we do to offline franchise gets applied to online franchise. Um, they're, they're one and the same. Obviously, when you play online, there's a few extra rules about only the commissioner can do certain things. But you're really playing the same, the same mode right. either way. And you can actually add, that's one thing that, uh, if you wouldn't mind touching on real quick, you added some abilities for the commissioners this year yes. uh, in an online one. We can't show it because we're using an offline one in this demonstration, but... Um, right. Yeah, you gave people some tools. So some of the most heavily requested features out there, are obviously, uh, as a commissioner, the idea of only one person kind of on the throne doing all the actions. Um, you have, let's say, you're the commissioner, you're going to be going on vacation soon, so you want to appoint a lieutenant, or you know, you want to have multiple commissioners in the league. So you could have, and I know this, I've been in community leagues before where I've been really enthusiastic to play, and then you know, the commissioner's like, oh, you know, I'll be back in a week or so. And it's just <laughs> interesting to see what the chain reaction of events of the, commis the commissioner's gone, and everyone just, kind of, the, the league just kind of falls apart. So this is our way of saying, okay, uh, you can appoint us. Uh, several different commissioners out there. They basically all have the same powers. Uh, you can also, you know, set yourself to autopilot. And we've had autopilot before, but it was more of a just toggle it on and off. Now you could say, you know, I just joined this league and they're in the preseason. I don't really care about that. I'm going to autopilot for four weeks. Very really cool. That's so awesome. Coming out of autopilot, like, you know, you sim through the four weeks, it handles everything for you. And at the end of that four weeks, it turns you off autopilot and, you know, it's back to being in your control. We will continue to advance. We'll get the first relocation option first. We'll be choosing our city. All right. Should we should we go to uh, our producer over here, Marcus? Should we uh, should we take a, a request from people? Give us some options, Gabe. Sure. On where, so, on where you like, because I kind of want to show some of the new uniforms. So yeah. let's limit it to, to so, some of the cities with the new newer, or they all, I guess, have some new so designs but all of our cities definitely have new uniform designs but we also have the marketing contest where we had a lot of, a lot of user submitted content so I'd say let's throw it up to LA San Antonio Sacramento uh, Columbus you know if there's anything they uh, our users particularly want to go to uh, not gonna do Houston there's already a team there <laughs> kind, of a, kind of a neat feature though that you can kind of share the market with Houston 
So let's go ahead and choose a city. Bring the Oilers back. London. Okay, so we could really expand the, the NFL mm -hmm. market. Mm -hmm. Get a world game. I like the idea. Mexico City, too. Kind of a neat thing with Mexico City. Uh, when you're choosing your uniforms and you're choosing your team name, the, the Twitter messages are actually in Spanish. <laughs> That's awesome. It's a nice touch. Nice little touch. It's a nice touch. Toronto, San Antonio, Orlando, Salt Lake City, Brooklyn. Whoa, Orlando, low fan interest. I'm interested. Bring a fan, bring that's a you. team that's, here. That's the one. That's the one guy. The one yeah, guy right there. It's definitely a college sports yeah. town. Florida's, a little, Florida's a very crowded with uh, yeah, with a lot uh, of football teams. Football teams, but you yeah. know, as a team here in Orlando, it's hard not to play. Put yeah. them in there. And, and there's some neat little uh, Easter eggs in there. You know, you, you oh, could really? play as the Wizards. You could play as uh, the Sentinels if you're familiar with the Orlando Sentinels. Okay. So it's a, it's, a, it's a nice little treat for our fans, especially the fans here in, in Central Florida. So we have a preference for a place to move to? I can think of some places if nobody's suggested. Let's go to San Antonio. All right, you know, average market size, the beauty of it's, you know, loyal fan base. No matter what happens, they're always gonna stand by your side. Oh man, those Spurs fans. They are dedicated. And this, the gray and black, right? I mean, the Spurs, and now we got the Raiders <laughs> out there. They wrap them. Uh, I believe uh, owner mode was an addition we had from last year, so now they're re relocating. We're getting a question about, you know, why. Well, it's official. You guys are moving after this season. I speak on behalf of all the fans here. Why do you assume that city is any better Ooh. than this one? It's a tough some heat. Tough question. Tough question. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Making me feel guilty about it. Yeah. Uh, I get that many of our fans would be upset. But long term, I think this is the best decision for us. <laughs> so you'll see, at, if you're playing owner mode, you instantly know, you know, per win basis, per loss, what you just said kind of helps your team value increase over time. Um, so let's go to the next step, which will be choosing our team name. All right, so meanwhile, the Browns are still developing their, their players just like you would expect them to. You guys also implemented a lot of, uh, you know, intelligence as to how the CPU teams, uh, this one, it, we're controlling, but we're obviously simulating right. each week. So Even though we're controlling the team, uh, because we're advancing these weeks, it's delegating that game prep uh, option. So it's going to continue to build up the team, and it's going to do it in the smartest way possible. If the confidence is really low uh, for some of your players, maybe they had a bad one or two bad preseason games, then we'll make sure that you know they keep getting their confidence boosted. If there's a lot of young guys on the team, a lot of talented receiver, you know, receiver, the quarterback, obviously, it's going to keep developing those players. That's big. So let's look at our team names. I think we're going to go with the Marshals. Real, th uh, real quick thing to point out, you know, if I if I chose to keep the Raiders, we try to make sure that you know the end zones, um, the announcers, they don't call out Oakland anymore. It's not the Oakland oh, okay. Raiders anymore. It's the San Antonio Raiders. Uh, earlier today, I played. I moved the Raiders to Mexico City, but I was like, why don't I keep the concept of them being the Raiders? You know, the end zones changed. The the uh, Larry Ridley, our intro guy in the pregame, said, you know, get ready to see the Mexico City Raiders. It's a neat little touch. So while we're on this topic, Gabe, we talked about this before we started. Uh, oh, I do like that logo. Yeah, we'll um, and this is one of our fans submitted. Uh, okay. Logos. Yeah, very cool. So, yeah, for those who don't know, we ha held a, uh, a fan contest. RG, I don't know if you remember this. This was back in uh, January or February. We were like, hey, if you guys have, uh, you know, there are tons of people, talented artists out there. And we were like, hey, if you guys want to submit uh, one of these logos, uniform designs to us to, to put into a connected franchise for the relocation teams. Uh, and we accepted a bunch of, of the best ones and they made it into the game. And this happens to be one of them, but obviously Josh put in a lot of work with all the rest of the uniforms to, right. to, to make them look, you know, really sharp yeah. too. If you think about it, we have several different options of where you can move. And then once you've moved, you have options of what your team name will be, and then you take it that next step further, you have different uniform types with the, each of those team names. So um, the, the permutations, the different amount of oh, possibilities wow. are just ridiculous. There's so many different options out there. So obviously we crowdsourced it. We had some great uh, user submitted content. And um, the beauty of it all is just, you know, Josh put a lot of time into this. He worked really closely with our graphics department and uh, he was able to create a lot of uh, kind of, you know, nice looking uniforms. To, to go through and it's neat to see you know with oh, all these I like uniforms these. i think yeah. we'll go with these i think uh 
I think it actually Oof. wins the popularity vote as well. That's sharp. Um, okay, so we, you briefly touched on it, but I'm getting a lot of questions on Twitter about the presentation stuff yes. in CFM while we're while we're simulating here. Um, we didn't touch on it on the presentation uh, stream. We probably should have a little bit, but we were kind of avoiding ratings at that point. Now all the ratings are the cat's out of the bag on the rating stuff. So we could talk about this, but yes, to answer their question, yes, there are you know different presentation elements and broadcast elements for CFM. Kind of talk us through that a little bit, if you don't mind. Definitely. So we definitely worked, CFM worked really closely with our presentation team who handle all that in-game presentation aspects, the UI, um, the commentary, the broadcast, the whole broadcast flow. And the beauty of it all is, you know, we were able to push a lot of things inside of CFM through to in-game. So, you know, uh, when you're in the fourth quarter, you'll see your upcoming schedule for the next week. If, uh, you know, let's say you're in the middle of the season, you can... Um, You'll start seeing where we start doing the playoff talks. You'll look at division. You know the division standings will come up. The um, the playoff picture, the wild card hunt. If you're one of those teams kind of on that wild card bubble, the, definitely the commentary is going to hit on that. Um, it's just it's definitely neat to see the game. The experience doesn't end on the here in the menus. Once you go into the game, your your experience continues into it. You know commentary hits on it. Team rankings. If you're leading the league in sacks, you just sack the quarterback. They're going to talk about that. Like, a, you know, this this team has just been one of the most dominant teams. You want to dive into another uh, game prep? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, let's I'm, do it. I'm ready. Anyway. Meanwhile, I'll Gabe, I'll I'm going to go ahead and uh, push a call out here. Pass rush drill. That's a good. I think one. that's a, yeah, a that's, good recommendation. That's very, this is a great one. This is a great one. All right, everybody. Uh, if you would like to ask a question. On Twitter, hit us up with the hashtag Ask Gabe. Why not? Ask Gabe. Short and sweet. Hashtag Ask Gabe. I'll be looking through and I'll uh, or I'll get uh, Gabe to kind of look at him and try to answer your questions as we go through this. Browns with three guys on the D line at 83 overall. Nice. See, the start. Browns are pretty good this year. They're like good. this, this is. I mean, they've Double got a shot. lot of young talent. Yeah. If they can put it together, you know, it'll be interesting to see. And I know we're playing around with Johnny Football because he's Mr. Popular right now, but I actually think Hoyer is going to be a pretty solid quarterback this year. This is this drills a great example of how I talked about earlier, killing two birds in one stone. Like, you're really going to want to get into skills trainer and learn how to use these new pass rush mechanics. It's not something you just want to dive straight into game and start trying to use. Being able to go into these drills and actually use – you know, this stuff in a practice scenario is going to prep you. Let's for player, if you're playing, has Johnny Menzel, has the quarterback. Oh, man. Oh. Oh. I couldn't get to him. They double team me. It's hard to get off those double team blocks, man. That's rough. <laughs> Let's Let's see. Let me see if I you can. almost got to him, too. If you play as a defensive Jump back, if you play as a defensive lineman, uh, we're going to use me. the there player lock camera. Here I come. Get him. Here I come. <laughs> Screaming. You see, it, it, not to get into one it. thing I, 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 I'm sorry, I, I get passionate. One thing I really like about these is you see I'm getting double team blocked right here. It's way harder to win those matchups on the line when a pass block double team triggers. It's, it's like real life. If you could get on the outside, oh my God, oh, you see him just pancake me. Luckily, the rest of, I got 83 all over the rest of the D line, so they're helping me out a little bit. You went into this drill as a defensive tackle, and your duty pretty much is eating up those double teams, taking there we up go. those blocks. There we go. And you see, when you press, I'm not doing a good job of it, but for the users watching at home, when the icon comes up on the screen, how that X icon appeared on the screen, that's the time you want to press the button. It, we actually let you know. Oh my oh, gosh, man. I went away from him. You kind of blew that one. Somebody's going to get him. <laughs> I, blew, I blew that one. But we actually give you the indicator that lets you know the best time to press the button for your best success chance, and, that, and that's a huge help. Do myself some justice here. It's not easy getting sacks from the interior. It's, you know what it is. You, you, see, I'm contributing, though. They, they pass block double teaming me. The rest of the D-line brings the pressure. Getting it done. Yeah, we um, still credit the user for completing those because you're performing your role well. You're eating up a double block. You're kind of guiding the quarterback. 
um, keeping the pocket where it should be, and then obviously like that. That the edge rushers are going to do the job. I, I think the mistake I made here, too, is I, I picked a defense to tackle. In a drill like this, the, the tip I would give is use a defense to end so you can try to avoid some of those pass block double teams. When you watch NFL football, a lot of the times it's not the D tackles that are getting the majority of the sacks. It's that outside pass rush, the D ends, the linebackers, or whatnot, because they don't have to deal with as many double team blocks. So in a drill like this, it, it would be better to more ideal to use, you know, a linebacker defense to end uh, mistake on my part. Unless though, I, I've actually I've actually uh, had some success with guys like Atkins and stuff like that. I mean, if it's a, an elite defensive tackle, you can actually uh, yeah. get through a lot. Yeah, you can get through there, especially if it's a single block. It's just the likelihood of that double team block is going to be, I, I feel, much greater yeah, 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 at the D tackle sure. position. Ah, you still got your XP, though. Look at that. If yeah. they try to run up the middle, though, I would have popped them. <laughs> so here's where you can actually start seeing some of those uh, confidence changes uh, throughout the week. Uh, you know, for winning a close game, you know, I had 100 yards receiving. So that actually clues you in also. If you're playing as a quarterback or if you're the coach of the team, if you want to keep your receiver's confidence high, you keep feeding them the ball. Um, so it, it kind of, it, you know, this entire experience of confidence, it kind of, guides you into what you should be doing. Another tip would be looking at the team's uh, the team goals. So if you have a receiver whose goal is to have you know a certain amount of touchdowns, then you want to make sure you keep feeding him the ball, especially if it's a reason you want to, you know, it's a receiver you want to develop, you want him to make sure he gets a huge season uh, XP bonus. Um, and sure, yeah. One, sorry, one thing that we talked about earlier is there's different tier, tiers of the drill too. So if you do want to develop your defensive tackle as well, we could get you know the lesser tier drill of that where it's a one-on-one -on -one situation with the D tackle against the blocker, and you'll have a better likelihood of success there in that type of drill. So th there's different tiers of, of these drills where you can you know some are going to be harder where you might want to use a DN and like the one we were at, but then you also have you know the one-on-one -on -one block drills where it might be better to use a D tackle in that situation because sure. it's a one-on-one -on -one situation, and that's something I really like. So now that we've actually gotten into the regular season too, you'll see in the recommended activities where we actually introduce some of those game plan game plan elements, so that we know that the fact that you're you know you're going to be facing the Saints, you know one of the best passing defenses out there, you know you want to make sure your wide receivers are confident, and make sure they have the right amount of experience. So you know one of the first things that they recommend you do is you know keep up the confidence of your receivers. So that's we have amount. Do we have a, yeah? We do just enough time to actually do that for yeah. Gordon could use a little bit of a boost. Uh, so you see those confidence nice. changes seven. happening over time. Gives plus seven. Um, that's actually a pretty huge boost. Game plan, boost, game plan, confidence activities in general are going to give you a pretty large reward. Um, as you can see, most of the other events happening here have been plus ones and plus fives. Uh, the fact that Miles Austin had a good game that that was a pretty large confidence boost for him. So confidence isn't going to be something that fluctuates wildly each weekend, week out. Right. Um, it's something that you actually have to kind of build up long term. So, at what point do, do you start to see ratings change? <clears throat> excuse me, change based on your confidence. So, once your ra uh, confidence rating goes above seventy-five, you're going to start seeing your intangible ratings. We one thing we wanted to make sure was just because you're playing confident doesn't mean you're a stronger player or a faster player. We wanted to make sure the ratings you were impacting were those intangible ratings. Right. You, know, you want to make sure if your confidence is high, you're a little bit more, uh, you know, sharper in your routes or uh, if you're playing as a quarterback, you're a little bit more accurate once you get above 75. And then once the reverse of that, once you start dipping below 30 is when you start seeing those uh, negative penalties happening. So, you know, if, if Peyton Manning were to get below a 30, then, you know, his accuracy might start dropping off. He's not going to play like the Peyton Manning you, you've seen all, all through the last season, gotcha. minus the Super Bowl. I, I, I think that's really cool how you guys focus on the ratings that are, are mainly technique, not the physical component of it. So, you know, like you said, a receiver, yeah. route running trade, quarterback, you know, throw accuracy, uh, defensive lineman, block shedding, stuff like right, you're that. You're not going to get that, faster cool. just because you are yeah. feeling confident. I'm and feeling confident I could go out in – into the parking lot and run a fast 40, but that doesn't mean I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> and so if I, you want to boost your speed, there's a the place to do it. So yeah, there's a the place to do it. And I believe we're at a point where we're allowed to talk about ratings. We're kind of yep. able to kind of dive in here. So one of the beauties of you know, what we did here was before when you went in to buy, buy packages, it was kind of a, a tough experience. Let's, if you simmed through the entire season and you had 20,000 experience to spend and you hadn't spent it, you know, you still had to buy those each individually. You had a right. pop up for each one, and you're only increasing things by one point. <laughs> um, for for a rookie quarterback like Johnny Menzel, the big things to hit on would probably be obviously his awareness. 
uh, let's see, it's consistency. You, you saw also the consistency was something that factored into game prep. And the more you increase that, the more likely you're to get the higher end of those XP and confidence goals. So big deal for a, a quarterback in general is just ra raising that awareness. And I can just add or remove easily through here as long as I have the <laughs> XP RG amount. is giving you the <laughs> we're not worthy. <laughs> And, uh, you know, it starts ticking down from your available XP. You hit a point where you can't add any more. Um, so actually, that's a pretty good boost to him right there. We give him 63 awareness. You raise that up, and you see his overall rating just shot up a little bit. You know, awareness is a big deal for a quarterback. They have to have that pocket awareness. Uh, we got a couple of questions here for you from shoot. Ask Gabe. Um, has player personality changed? Does it change throughout the season and career? So player personality is a rating that's fixed to the player when they're either drafted, Johnny Moore would assign a personality rating to the player, or in our draft class generator, our random draft classes, uh, we assign personality ratings to a player. What does change is their popularity. So okay. the player's performance, personality is sort of a modifier on top of that. So you look at uh, what type of player is he? Is he a quarterback? Is he a receiver? Is he an offensive lineman? Uh, where is he on the depth chart? Is he the starter? Is he the backup? Is he the third stringer? How has he performed lately? How many Super Bowls has he won? So obviously a quarterback, first string, uh, you know, first string quarterback who's had some success re recently, his popularity is going to be high. Yeah. Personality plays a big role into that, but it helps to be, you know, the star of the team, to, to lead the team, and to perform really well. If you well. don't mind, let me, let me hop in here. Uh, so basically what you're saying, to get the double whammy, you kind of, you want to, uh, you got to get a little lucky with a guy's personality, and then his popularity could build up too, and then you got the double uh, yeah, exactly. awesomeness for how popular they are. Uh, oh, sorry, I was going to, I can't, as everyone's kind of probably learned by now, I um, cannot play and talk at the same time, but here we go. So here's uh, team popularity and player, player marketing. marketing. So kind of see there. Joe Hayden here seems to be uh, the most popular guy right now. Yeah, he's dominant defensive back. Josh Gordon yeah. also really popular. And as you go down, you know, there's your boy Johnny Manziel. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, Never mind. He is definitely the most popular. <laughs> and I think if you look at jersey sales, it probably reflects yeah. that also yeah, yeah, in yeah. our game and in real life. Yeah. Um, Justin Gilbert also, you know, he's a rookie that has a lot of promise. His popularity is still a little bit low, but, you know, sure enough, play a few games, make sure he keeps performing really well, and that you'll, his popularity will start increasing. I think we might could start charging a little more for the Manziel jerseys. What do you think? Oh, we could probably charge a little more for number two. What do you think, RG? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, oh, fans, would, fans would be so... No, you don't have to. That, the fans would be so bad. What, wait, why am I having to pay... Twenty dollars more for his jersey. Dude, I went to the mall the other day. It's just those Johnny Nose uh, yeah. football oh, shirts man. everywhere. You I see them myself. So at this point, to see those relocation uniforms, do you want to start swimming to the next season? Yeah, let's do it. All right. And uh, just who knows anyway. what could happen now? <laughs> yeah. And Let's we're gonna through it. we're gonna skip through the draft. And there's you know the draft UI, the flow of it hasn't really changed, but you know the core of how the draft is built and how we have uh, developed the draft over the season is pretty has been a, a huge addition for us. Um, you know, in the past, draft classes were something that we kind of had to hand create, and the time sink that was was phenomenal. Uh, if you imagine 300 players per class, 30 years of CFM, that's 9,000 players that we had to go through and make sure that they all um, made sense where we slotted them in the first, ra first round through seven, and even the undrafted guys also. So uh, we put a lot of time this year and a little bit of last year's time into making sure that we built out a draft class player generator that in a very smart way looked at you know if I'm generating a first round player I'm probably he's probably gonna be from a big school he's probably if he's a top 10 player he's definitely gonna be a big school guy he's gonna be one of our premier positions like a quarterback a defensive tackle and one of those dominant linebackers shut down corners um, the draft class generator is all aware of all that stuff and you know the names we want to make sure the names made sense to the players race and small little touches like that just to make sure that um, we could be so much more hands off with it. And it's actually kind of fun to see. It's no longer you get to, I'm, I was an old NFL head coach guy. It was, you know, an NFL head coach, you see LaRon James. The guy was like a seven, yeah, LaRon. <laughs> the guy was a seventh round wide receiver, um, but you knew he'd become the, one of the most dominant receivers in the league. And, you know, some guys would just draft him immediately, but the fact that you knew that the CPU would draft him around the seventh round, you could wait, you could uh, draft mm -hmm. other players, players sure. you knew would be gone. 
and then grab that guy in the seventh round, and then boom, you just got your starting receiver. Yeah. Um, you know, when the community, it wouldn't take long for the community to build these guides that would allow uh, our, you know, a lot of people to just pick apart draft classes and really easily go in there and sort of, you know, just build put up the, guides. Yeah. Yeah. They put up draft they guides. Put up kill the, the integrity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you got all like this maximum, one hundred percent six scouting report, and I don't got it. I mean, Pablo it's not Parker, fair, man. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is our way of kind of. For the fans and for us developers also, it takes away that time sink of hand creating those players. And for our fans, it makes every single draft class a completely new experience and very interesting. Um, the beauty of the names also for our players, all of our last names, we made sure to get recorded by Trey Wingo and Phil and Jim. So uh, in the draft, if that player has a story, and I'll mention, I'll talk about what we did for branching storylines also in a bit. If that guy has a story, Trey Wingo is going to actually call. Like, what can you tell us about you know, Manziel? What can you tell us about uh, Wooden? And uh, Adam Schefter will go in and start telling, talking about the player's story if a, a story was applied to him at some point. Sure. Once you go into game, Phil and Jim, if you make a big play, you're going to hear that rookie, that drafted player, his name get called out. And that's something that fans, you know, you play the game and you, you know, it sounded silent. If you were in 10, 15 years and it didn't, if the game didn't know who any of these guys were, the game sounded very different. Now, 10, 15 years down, especially with all the CFM additions to presentation, it's fun to play and kind of experience that alternate universe of all these completely different guys, but you know, presentation still sounds good. All the UI, the banners, they all look good. That's big to keep you captured into it. And what you just talked about, one thing I love is I can now have a unique experience. Like I could draft some guy that, you know, potentially nobody else is ever gonna see this player. I could get that 99 speed quarterback. I mean, I don't know if you have that logic into it, but there's potential that you know, out of all these millions of CFMs that are out there, yeah. nobody's going to be able to draft a player just like this one. He's going to be unique right. to my CFM, <clears throat> and that's something that I'm really excited about. I think that's really cool. And it puts that much more emphasis on scouting, which you guys have tuned a little bit to. I'll let you talk about that. First, here's a uh, question from Shopmaster on Twitter. Are the, are the in-game drills for every position – do you get more XP for in-game drills than simulation drills? Uh, yes, you do. For those drills specifically, also if you're hitting silver and metal gold, um, if you're hitting silver, if you're hitting gold, we're going to give you a larger reward for those completing those drills. It's a time investment for our users. You know, we want to make sure that we reward sure. them to reflect that. Um, having said that, you, the experience is still very much the same if you were going in there and doing those out-of-game activities. We want to make sure we're both rewarding the guys who are spending that extra amount of time. And at the same time, as RG's talked about several times before, you're teaching, you're learning the game as you're doing that. So there's that additional element on top of it. If you're just going in there and you know having team meetings and watching film, you yourself aren't actually improving in the game of Madden. Uh, this is an opportunity for people to improve and also get that extra reward. And when they start getting gold, they'll start seeing those bigger rewards come in. Um, the thing about the draft also, branching storylines has been a feature we introduced two years ago, and mm -hmm. this is the same case that goes for draft classes. The time it takes, the investment to, to write all those, to apply it to players, um, to kind of plan that all out throughout the years, is, is a massive time sink. And for us and for our users, it's kind of neat now that those branching storylines still very much exist. We just have logic in our system to say, you know, every week we want to apply a story to a player. And then we dynamically, we, using logic, we look at, you know, which type of player should get this type of story. You know, you get towards the end of the season, uh, and we're obviously want to say who's the who who was the Heisman winner. And you know, we look at, you know, some of the best quarterbacks or receivers or even defensive players. You know, so that it kind of happens kind of infrequently, but uh, you'll see at some point you'll see a story come up about, you know, so and so, Sir Economy, which is yeah. one of the funnier <laughs> names from uh, last year. Sir Economy has won the Heisman. Um, <laughs> And that does some other things under the hood to the player. Because you mentioned scouting and how's that changed. Well, the draft is constantly these. This we don't just generate the players and that's it at the start of the season. Throughout the season, these stories are coming and they're doing small things to tweak their intangible ratings, to tweak their physical ratings. If a guy gets injured, you're not going to be able to scout him for the rest of the season. Um, the guy might get kicked off the team. You're, you're going to lose the ability to scout him. You might get a guy who. Uh, one of our younger, like one of the juniors, underclassmen, he may decide to wait until next year, and then you'll see him pop up in next year's class. It's just a way to keep the draft every week. But, but I can take the risk and go ahead and draft that guy that got injured that I couldn't scout it on the chance of, hey, you know, yeah. this could be a you know a steal right here. Yeah, that's I mean, awesome. We when, we when we looked at that logic, we wanted to make sure that you don't want to take a seventh round punter and say he got injured. I mean, what's that? 
as a user, like, where's the risk reward there? That he's yeah. just a punter. What's the injury going to do to him? But you know, you take that first round, you know, the, that first round top ten wide receiver. He got injured uh, during uh, the combine or something, and you still he's still a top ten wide receiver. You sure you probably lost the ability to scout him a little bit, but you know, it's that awesome Absolutely. risk of being able to That's take a guy. Awesome. All right, here's one from Bassmaster14. When you draft somebody, will they have like a story or just a couple players? I think he's asking about during the draft when they talk about players. Right. So if a story at any point, if a story was applied to a player, and you'll know if a story was applied to a player in our new system, we'll have a news story kind of pop up and talk about that guy. Uh, and when we send through a few weeks in this next season, it looks like we're already, yeah, we're going through the draft. We're in week one of the preseason. So thanks to Sim2, we've kind of already advanced to next year without touching it. Um, once you draft one of those guys who has a story applied to him, you'll hear Trey Wingo talk about that guy and then pass it on to Adam Schefter, who will give a full analysis of that player, his background, and even his opinion of how he thinks he'll perform once, he, once he's okay. been drafted. Very cool. Yes. All right. Um... Oh, here's one from OVFD55 on Twitter. Can you use your whole game prep to focus on one player? I can answer that for Gabe. Yes, you could focus all your hours on one player every week if you wanted to. You can just sit there and, and just spend all your hours on Johnny Football if you, you have, want to. You have total control of game prep. If that's what you want to do, go, go up for it. I mean, uh, I'm a Jaguar fan personally. It's one of the youngest teams in the league. I, there's a little... Check over. Right. No, no, no. That, that's like the the Florida team that I kind of root for. Great, great. You can join. You can join our fan base. Yeah, he's a true uh, fan. He's a true fan. Yeah, I'm wearing my, Let's I'm wearing go, my Blake Bold, City, Bold City Brigade shirt underneath this. Bortles, Bortles. And so you know you you have you have Bortles, the guy you just drafted. You have probably one of the youngest offensive lines in the league. You also have one of the youngest secondaries in the league. If you're just focusing all your time on Bortles, I'm sure a lot of users will do that. I know I'd, I'd make sure when I play my preseason that Bortles is getting reps, but you're, you're forgetting about those guys on the offensive line. You're forgetting about those secondary guys. They're rookies that are going to be starting. Sure. You want to make sure their awareness is there. They're, for those defensive players, their play recognition is there. Like, Yeah, you can focus on one guy and make that guy a 99 or something. You can make him be the best, but you're seriously you're hurting the rest of your team when you do that at the same time. All right. Um, I think we can go, go into Mark to, Davis. We can actually play. Let's go back to Twitter here. I'll look for some more questions. Sure. Ooh, so now you that. see that we have become the Marshals. This guy wants to see the Toronto relocation teams. Do you know uh, his names off the top of your head? So I can read them. Sure. I actually have a list of all the teams available oh, to us here. awesome. Uh, Toronto's, you got the Huskies. Go ahead. Huskies, Mounties, and Thunderbirds. He actually put Thunderbirds in the tweet. So yep. I guess he's excited about that one. Thunderbirds are still there. Uh, here's one from Grant. He asks, will there be a Leon Sandcastle in the drafts? <laughs> that would be tough with the random with the random draft classes. You know what? With the beauty of random draft classes, there's a very strong <laughs> chance that Leon... I wouldn't say a very strong chance. I'd say... There's all of it, all of it's up to chance. There may be chance. a Leon. <laughs> yeah, you might get a Leon Sandcastle. You may get like Sir Economy may come back. You 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 get a lot of different interesting players. You might get an RG. I'm gonna have to draft that dude. Uh, he's gonna be a beast. <laughs> Just throw it up. Just throw it up. He'll go get it. A quick example of our uh, branching storyline system was after this draft class was generated. Um, you know, we have a, a story already coming out about this guy Clinton Ross being a, like a surefire hit, and then you have Daryl Donaldson. You know, former rugby guy who decided he wanted to come out and try football. So it kind of gives you an idea. It kind of builds a story for these players. Once you draft those guys, and we only we've only gone one week into the league, and these are already stories being applied to these guys. So you can imagine by the time you reach the end of the season that you'll have a good chunk of stories to talk about these guys. Oh wow, we got to. Uh... I get to get out here with the marshals. Let's get it. <laughs> it's like we're gonna play a game with the marshals. One thing is that while we did sim through, we sim through the season. As an owner, we kind of neglected our finances. So yeah, it looks like you're you're in the hole a little bit. So maybe as you know, as a player or as a coach, you can sim through ten years and not necessarily have to worry about that. You know, the financial side of things. But as an owner, you want to make sure you know you can sim ahead. But hey, make sure you're watching your <laughs> funds. Make sure you have enough money to sign some guys once it comes to free agency. 
Uh, this one from Twitter, Sim Football Critic. Are there new stats, banners, overlays for division leaders, playoffs, etc.? Yes, there are. Um, so, depending on where you are in the season, we kind of show you different information. Um, let's say Hello, it's still early in the season. You get towards the, the fourth quarter. We're going to talk about you know your upcoming schedule um, throughout the game as you perform. You know you get some sacks, everybody. touchdowns, uh, receptions. We'll talk about your offensive and defensive rank so compared to the rest of the league. Antonio you know, it might be 29th in sacks. Uh, if if you're say you're 32nd in sacks, and I know the Jaguars were last season. You're last in the, the season Alamo in sacks, and you're doing really well. They're going to talk Welcome about that. They're the saying, hey, NFL this is one of the worst performing defensive line units, and yet this season, here they the are uh, the performing really well. Once you get later into the season, then we start looking at the division standings after you've played a few games, and we actually have a pretty good representation of what the division looks like. So you can get that idea of you know, what are the division standings. Ooh, like, you know, who are the big players right now? And then once you get getting close to the playoffs, that's when we look at here's the playoff picture. Here's the teams that have clinched their, their division, clinched the conference. Here's the teams that are on that bubble for the wild card. And then uh, once you're actually in the playoffs, that's when we show the uh, playoff brackets and talk about, you know, who's in, who's in the division championship, who's in the conference championship, who is probably going to possibly win the Super Bowl. All of that's there, and we talk Very about cool. it. Very cool. Show yeah. it through banners, audios talking about it. These games feel more like a CFM experience. All right, JP, if you're watching, I know you are. There's your answer. There's your answer. Look, Let's get some more questions. I know a lot yeah, of people, people, people probably curious about presentation, and that's a, that's a big deal. Oh, we got oh, Derek Carr. We got the young buck in there. Derek Carr. <laughs> so, yeah, also we did sim season, and I also sent through the preseason for this. So, you know, who knows who, who, they, they, drafted, yeah. who, knows, who knows who they drafted, who they signed in free agency, who they've developed. Um, it, it's, it's fun to kind of send through and then and see kind of these things. Yeah, yeah, and Rogers is your running back now instead of Jones MJD. So, in I where he, he could be hurt or anything. Off me. It took number 32. Uh, MJD is not there. I think they got Jacquez Rogers. They did a little free agency, uh, Here's a look free agency pick up there. We have the Marshalls off to a strong start Donald. today. Huh? Yeah, these jerseys are sick. I'm feeling um. this right now. This is like a new flavor. I'm, I'm ready. It's perform though. Perform. Sure. All right, all right. I got a this angle route. Go these this angle year. routes are usually Defense money. Now. Hopefully, we <laughs> can. You see that blitz angle route? First down, baby. Moving the sticks. And that's Rogers. That's the new pickup. You know, they're, yeah. they're real happy. Just got to show them off a little bit. Derek Carr getting the start now. Guess uh, <laughs> it's good to get the ball off quick too, especially a young guy with Carr. Because once that pressure comes at you, you got a good chance of it an accurate throw. And the pressure is coming this year in Madden 15. That those new pass rush moves. But like we've been developing Manziel uh, while we were playing as the Browns, the CP was also know knowing that hey, we have Derek Carr. This is a guy that we want to make sure that we develop. We weren't Roger doing it ourselves, but the CPU knew. We want to make sure this quarterback's ready because ultimately, you know, maybe oh you're going to start, hey, don't get too confident. Oh you're going to start losing confidence in your life. Yeah, it's rough out there. Uh, this one from Jared. Is there uh, more emphasis on CFM playoff games? They're different. Huge emphasis. Like, so if you, the presentation is, we definitely have a special presentation for those playoff experiences. Obviously, the Super Bowl has its own very unique presentation, but also Coming from an owner mode perspective, uh, from a player's perspective, from a coach perspective, Offense winning those playoff here. games, getting to the playoffs, is it means huge rewards for you from an XP perspective. From a confidence perspective, you win playoffs, your confidence is going to soar. Um, and, you know, merchandise sales, uh, ticket sales, you know, all that in the playoffs is a huge deal. All right, RG, here's a gameplay one. Uh, this one from QB Hitman. That double move From the gun. looked like oh gosh, it man. could be exploitable. Does man coverage stand a chance? I think he was talking about the one that you ran. I'm thinking it was talking about the one you ran at practice. So I, I don't it's just dependent on I don't know. Oh, I, yeah, I think he's talking about the one. A lot of that. So one thing we have this year is the global coverage adjustment. So if you know someone's going to do a double move to the outside or the inside, you could shade your defense or individually shade the defender who's guarding him to play that route. And more often than not, he's going to be in a position to make a play on that ball as long as the ratings uh, matchup is there. And that's the other component of it is ratings play a huge uh, factor 
in that. So if a guy has a way better man coverage rating than the route running rating of the person running the double move, you, you won't even have to shade. He's just pretty much going to be on him or whatnot. So the, it's, it's really based on the ratings. It, it's, 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 it's and even if you have a ratings mismatch, we give you the tools to uh, account for that. Let's see if I can do something on defense. I'm sorry. I, as you can see, I'm, I'm not in rare Madden challenge form like I used to be. I mean, we, the, the AI is tougher. Rex exposed me on the last one. I've, I've taken a couple of tough L's. That's all right. To <laughs> Keep working on that confidence. Something to talk about here is David Fales is starting for the Bears. I'm not sure what happened to Cutler either. So he was either traded. I'd like to say CPU trading. Like the trade logic for CPU has definitely been increased. You'll see the CPU making a lot more trades throughout the season. Um, for Cutler, maybe he was hurt. Maybe Fales somehow outplayed him and became the starter. Or um, yeah, it's kind of, kind of interesting. Simulating through preseason an injury, you know, possible for sure. Yeah, and a guy like Cutler. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what his injury rating, but I doubt it's that Right. Let's see if, if RG... Ooh, you can redeem yourself on defense. Yeah. So yeah. the marshals. We didn't really we lock people up. So we do. Um, just looking through this feed here. Once again, hashtag Ask Gabe if you have any questions for CFM. We don't have a ton of time left. We'll probably wrap up here pretty quick, though. So, Gabe, if you want to go over some of the other uh, features that... Sure. That uh, you want to touch on while RG's kind of playing. Obviously, uh, the Pro Bowl, we had re reacted to the NFL, and the Pro Bowl is no longer a difference between a AFC and Third NFC. The Pro Bowl is a fan vote. And, you, know, you have Team Rice versus Team uh, Sanders. We'll actually rotate legends in and out every year, so there'll be different legends running the Pro Bowl teams. It's just to talk about owner mode a little bit also. We kind of, owner mode, it's first year implementation. Owner mode was a little bit lighter on the difficulty. Our users could get a lot away with, you know, setting our ticket prices really high, setting merchandise tickets put. And even if ticket sales went down, the fact that they were increased so high, they could make a lot of money. Now owner mode is a lot more difficult. There's more of a sweet spot when you set prices. Uh, you definitely want, don't want to sit at that average price it starts at. You want to kind of play with it and find out what the, what the good price. Maybe it's actually lower, maybe it's higher. Um, so, you know, there's going to be a lot more of a financial challenge when you play owner mode, if that's the, if that's the kind of experience you want. Um, injured reserve, once you go into injured reserve, you can, you know, at any point, if there's a guy that's recovered quicker than you thought, or you know, if you haven't used it yet, you can bring back a guy from the injured reserve, just like in the NFL now. Here's one. Uh, did you tune draft classes? No more five seven running backs with seventy speed. So, to give you a little idea of what under the hood happens with the draft class generator is that we build out what we call um, different player types and then tiers of those player types. So you have your, um, for running backs, you have your smaller Darren Sproles types, you know, your Brandon Jacob power backs, you know, your receivers, you have your Calvin Johnsons, but then you also have Ted, G Ted Ginn and um, all these different body types. And that gets tied into, you know, what type of player are they? It affects their ratings and affects their size. Nose tackles are obviously big guys. So anytime you see a nose tackle, you can imagine it's probably going to be a um, And then the size, and we try to make sure that, you know, a big guy shouldn't be running at 99 speed, you know. The, we, when we generate these players, we generate them looking at everything from their size to how fast they move, how strong they are. Um, okay, very cool. Put another one here. Oh, can you still play as a player? Any difference? The biggest difference is playing as a player, uh, especially if you're playing on the Xbox One or PlayStation 4, is that we utilize the new player lock camera. So if you're playing as a defensive back, if you're playing as a linebacker, the camera on default, and the users can toggle out of this, will be in that. And if you remember Road to Glory from NCAA, like that was um, every player had its own unique camera and its own unique experience. So you played from that perspective. Uh, also, game prep is there for a player. So as a player, you can choose every week, do I, know, do I want to increase my XP or do I want to increase my confidence? Right. Even, yeah. Even when you're not on a team. Like, let's say if you were released as a player and you're a free agent, um, you still can go in there and start going into skills trainer and improving certain aspects of you, just trying to get better. Um, you can improve your confidence and improve your XP, and hey, maybe a team actually jumps on you at some point. Or, or you're forced to retire and play as a different player or a coach or an owner. Yeah, and playing in RG, you can, you know, to, both of you could, but uh, playing as defensive end this year is a lot of fun because the new mechanics, so I think a lot of people are going to create uh, yeah, CFM players as defensive ends or defensive players in general because that camera, 
flipping around, it kind of it just makes you way more immersed into playing as that you know position when you're on defense with that camera. Angle. I admit, I, I've always been very stubborn in my Madden way, so I, I've been you know the, the standard camera all year. But when I went into Skills Trader and they showed me that defensive camera for some of those defensive drills, it really makes all the difference in the world a lot of the times. And it's um, yeah, it definitely helps in that situation. And it gives you a new feel, you know. It's a, Gives you that next gen feel. Yeah, as a Jaguar, as a Jaguar fan, I know our defensive line pressure hasn't always been there, and uh, I want to go in there either as an undrafted guy, a mid round guy, or a high round guy, plug myself into that defensive line, and you know, start creating that pressure that we really need. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I know we don't got much time left, so I'm gonna go for the gusto. <laughs> Let's go a little that B round. We got a three, we got three B rounds. What do you think, Gabe? You have time for that? Oh, definitely. Slanging. Especially. Oh. Did you get it? Oh no. Yeah. Respectful numbers for Carr though. Five, six, forty-four He's slanging. yards. He's I took that sack <laughs> earlier. I mean. He's being. You're being very conservative though. Too. Well, well you seen what I did. I, Pounded the rock. You pound the rock. You, you, they brought a bunch of people into the box. I had them with the play action. I've been, uh, you know, taking lessons from uh, Clint and everybody and Larry. A lot of people were asking me after uh, the last stream. They're like, it doesn't really seem like the inaccurate passes make a big difference or whatever. So the CFM I've been playing with, I, I think I'm controlling the Cowboys because I thought that might be fun. So I, I picked up. Um, I actually picked up. Josh Freeman and signed him as a free agent. Played a game in the rain. He came in in the preseason, and I swear, I was like two for eight at one point because he was overthrowing it, like throwing it wide, and also I had thrown like five picks in the game before, so his confidence was awful. So that's when you jump into game prep and start building up his confidence. Yeah, exactly. And you start playing well also. You know, yeah. You keep playing poorly, that confidence isn't going to go up. It, it, right. you know, game prep can only help you so much. It's such a performer at a high level. Right. Um, but it's, it's interesting to see how how much that starts impacting you, especially when you get down to like the, the zero, you know, five confidence. The Bears are ready to return the kick. When, when it comes to inaccurate throws, too, one thing that the users out there need to realize is much like in real life, you need to protect your quarterback. And if you just have pressure in your face and you're trying to throw with one of these guys that doesn't have great ratings, you know, don't expect expect to see these inaccurate throws. And if you want to negate that, you know, I know everyone's an NFL quarterback. They should be able to make, you know, the majority of the throws. But some of these guys just don't deal well with pressure on them. So you really got to take advantage of the mat, the max protect feature and just know when people are blitzing and know when to block people because um, pressure really will have an impact on, on the frequency of the throw. And RG, is there a difference between the skill levels too in that area? And are you still, I mean, is it, is it, it obviously it's going to be easier to play on rookie versus. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And then one thing I love about our game too is we, we give people sliders. I mean, if there's, if you don't really like the way that the inaccurates are working out for you. If you're a Bills fan and you feel like you know you're, you're playing on All Pro and EJ Manuel's getting too many inaccurate throws, you can just go ahead. It'll still be the All Pro difficulty, and you can move the sliders up and um, you know however you want passing to work. And that's one thing we, we did this year: is we untied skill level and sliders. So that's a big deal where you could still get the All Madden effect but still change the sliders to work um, how you want. If you're playing as an owner, uh, before if you wanted to fire your staff, you wanted a new trainer, a new head coach, a new scout, you would have had to wait until the offseason to do so. Now at any time you can jump in in the middle of the season and say, I'm going to get rid of my head coach, I want somebody new. Um, just like a lot of teams have done, is once you've gone to a certain point where you know you're not going to get into the Super Bowl, or you're not going to get into the playoffs, and you want to get rid of that level one, level two guy, you can just fire him at any point and try to bring in a, a, a better head coach at that point. Yeah, that is that is a, a really cool feature too. If you're the type of fan, fan who just wants to simulate the games and you know simulate week to week and not necessarily play the games for yourself, uh, or we've made a lot of improvements to our simulation technology in Warhood, and you know Super Sim has undergone a, a lot of changes where we, you know. Ratings have much uh, much of a bigger impact on simulation. Also, a player's confidence level is obviously we want confidence to impact the them just as much in the game than we do in game. Uh, their consistency, they're gonna that consistency t plays a factor. Their development trait. So a superstar may play a little bit better in sim than a normal or slow player would. 
just every year we try to touch on almost every aspect of CFM to improve it. Obviously, we want to introduce these larger features, game prep and confidence, uh, the relocation uniforms, draft classes, range of storylines, but we're also looking at trade logic, free agency. Uh, we haven't had a chance to look at the free agency redesign of that screen but yeah. in the offseason. But um, you, you see, you know, what teams are bidding on a guy, you know, how much interest is in, uh, how good he is. Um, it's just, it makes the offseason a lot more interesting. Yeah, and, and wasn't that under the hood impact? You just couldn't tell why a team was. Yeah. So it's all very clear now. You've got all the all the little bars that tell you, okay, no offense. I'm the Jags. You know, why, why should this guy be interested in the Jags versus why would he, you know, maybe he's a veteran quarterback who's trying to win that Super Bowl versus, you know, going to a team that's already set up for that like Peyton Manning did when he went to the Broncos. Still holding out hope that he actually wins that Super Bowl for the Broncos. But uh, so one thing I just forget, yeah, you see, we're, we're kind of in the um, the two minute warning here. So, oh my God! Oh, oh no! Oh, no. Oh, no. So I you. It's because I started talking. I thought I could talk and play at the same time. What I was gonna try to show you is I switched my okay. offensive tempo to no huddle. So I had. I not turned the ball over. Uh, oh, had I not turned the ball over, my team would have known that you know we're in a two-minute situation, and I wouldn't have had a hold wire or anything. My team would have started hurrying up to the line. I would have had access to the play call screen like you used to in NCAA, and I could have ran my offense on the fly right there. I'm sincerely, I'm sorry to the years back home for turning turning it over right there because I really did want to show you guys that. Got hit pretty hard. Yeah, my it bad, happens. Man. Sometimes you, you should really, I'm, I'm out you of should my, really uh, apologize to your quarterback. The field position <laughs> I'm, I'm out of my right here. Is <laughs> uh, so good. A neat little twist also is that as you play the games, you're playing against CPU, so you're an offline league. Um, all those alternate uniforms we built into the game, the CPU will choose to use those alternate uniforms. I remember I uh, had playing as the Jaguars for first game against the Eagles, and they decided to wear the Kelly Green the old fashioned. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So, and then our new system coming out of that game talked about it. It's like it was a neat. He featured. Do you think they're going to do it more often? Kind of that, that speculation. And it was just a nice touch. It's just you know you play these games and you're used to seeing these same teams over and over again. But once they throw you throw in a throwback or an alternate, it's just a really nice. Right. Right. Yeah. That's a nice one. You go ahead and uh, maybe get to get to halftime and then wrap it up. I just want to get out of halftime with the lead, man. I just I need to do it for the people. You need a halftime that has some like some good plays, you know. Uh, Boring halftime is just, you know, low score, not a lot of action. Give us give us some big play moments. Give us halftime. There we go. Pass rush. Agasa! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I get a little carried away. I get into it sometimes. I'm going to call a timeout. I think I could get... Oh, this is kind of boot this. Wow. I wonder what their kicker's kick power is right now. Even put a guy back there to return it, maybe. Should have. Oh, yeah. and he's missing it. He has the distance. He must have a ton of kick power uh, gold. Uh, I know uh, Clint Oldenburg did a fantastic job redesigning the kicking game this year, and he and he put in logic where you know quarterbacks aren't as often as they used to. Gonna, I mean, kickers aren't as often as they used to attempt kicks that they have no chance of getting. You would see that in Madden before, and that's something that uh, we we definitely wanted to address. So you shouldn't see, you know, guys that don't have, you know, a high 90s kick power attempting uh, long, kick, long kicks like that one. Yeah, I know there are a lot of people asking if uh, kickers were going to actually, or CPU kickers were going to miss more. Let me see if I could get a little of this no huddle action going for mm. the people out there. Quick tip for users when they start their the season, Marshall, especially for players out there who like that idea of rebuilding their team, their kind of starting drive. with one of the bigger teams Rogers in the league. Is, in the you know, one of the first things first you maybe can do is look at that uh, improved team, team roadmap. Go into first, you know, evaluate your roster. What kind of players do you want in each position? You can go into the, the scheme screen and change their scheme, change the playbooks you're running, and then change all the different types. Maybe you don't want a mobile quarterback. Maybe you want a pocket passer. Maybe you want to change. The Raiders are uh, very much emphasis on speed receivers. Maybe you want to change that to red zone threats, big body guys and route runners. Um, once you make all those changes, look at the team needs screen. Look at your roster and how that has infected, impacted their overall ratings. And that can kind of pull you in on how to build your team. And the team needs screen also suggests free agent players, maybe uh, players in free agency, players to trade out there that are available to you. Also, uh, talking about trades. Glory. Oh! Glory! 
Oh, if you no. lost it. I'm sorry, Gabe. I got carried away, man. Eddie Royal. You got me in the moment, too. I'm sorry. I was failing it. I was failing it. You seen the users? Have you seen it, though? I clicked on and they make them play. I don't know what I... I do I take three? Do I play for three? I mean, we're, we're on stream. We got to go for the glory, right? Yeah, go for the glory. You got to think about the halftime. Wide receiver screen. I like that idea. No. That's my safe play against the pass <laughs> rush. You guys want to get used to calling that, to especially when the first they on third down play off man coverage. Along with improving our trade logic and actually making for the CPU's trade more often, we've also tried to communicate to the user why the trade isn't. If they're failing at a trade, we want to communicate to them to how to make that trade better. You know, if they should offer more value, if they want more draft picks, they'll actually tell you, you know, we have no interest in this player at all. Give us something different. Maybe give us a draft pick. Uh, we break down the team needs for both teams to try to explain it all to you. If you want to make a trade really happen, uh, if you want the Johnny Manziel trade, you have to throw a lot at them. Yeah. A lot of teams actually don't have enough to throw at them to get Manzo. That does it for the but it's first cool to see the game communicating and giving you that feedback on how to make those trades. Yeah, it, it's always interesting. People want to just be able to uh, right, trade for Johnny Manzo. I mean, I guess you could know, just do it yourself. Control the Browns and, the and trade him, but to continue to give their fans in real life, it would be tough. And you were just the dominating the Bears, the Bears right now. Well, we're show it, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> we had accelerated right, clock. I'm Here's sorry, guys. Like I wanted the glory on that last last play. I can't believe I took a sack right there. I guess that rookie quarterback, though, that they traded, they probably should have stuck with Cutler, huh? I don't know what happened to him. Bales went down hard a few times. Later on the drive, Carr is on point with the throw, and this play will Marcel go to the field. Marcel Reed's field, he's going to get a touchdown. A little celebration, they did a fantastic job with those post-play celebrations this year. All right, guys, Gabe, if you have anything else.